Kevin. Yes. Good uh, morning, gentlemen. Is uh, my name is Kevin. I am the financial and uh, the operational manager of uh, a company. Uh, it is an honor for me today to stand here to report on our company operation for year 13. And uh, here is uh, our agenda for the presentation today. We are going to cover the summary of financial report, the operation, marketing, human human resource, and uh, by the end we will have uh, some recommendation for the uh, year 14 strategy. And uh, as you can see here, uh, this is our key financial statistic in year 13. At the moment, we have a 30 million cash on hand. We have the account receivable of uh, 83 million, nearly uh, 84 million. We have the our total asset is uh, 351 million, and um, our total liability is uh, six, uh, uh, 68 million. Those uh, two few numbers are very important, which I'm going to emphasize later. Here is our key financial performance in year 13 and as you can see our revenue in year 13 have a significant increase comparing to year 12 that's 18 um, more than 80 percent increase comparing to year 12 our um, operating profit was uh, increased as well and uh, if you look at our net profit comparing to year 12 we have made a massive increase with a uh, 11 percent increase and another indicator is our return on asset on that's also increased comparing to year 12 and uh, we have some uh, key financial activity in year 12 uh, in year 13 sorry in year 13 the first is uh, we buy back 1 million share at 23 dollar um, and 39 cents per share in 1 million share buy back in year 13 and we pay dividend of 2 dollar 20 cents per share in year 13 and uh, if you look looking at our stock price it has significant it's steadily improved over the different years and uh, if you look at it if you buy our share in year 12 at the uh, $23 we have we have paid dividend of $2.20 that means you have received 10% in um, return on investment and also if you bought the share in year 12 and uh, comparing to year 13 as you can see it's like 50% increase right we also make some repayment for our, um, our loan, five-year loan is um, 18.4 million and uh, for the 10-year loan is um, 11.5 million. Our total liability is reduced from like 7 million in year 12 to 68 million in year 13. As, I remember, as you remember, I mentioned before, just if we just looking back at this slide, we have cash on hand of 30 million, right? And we have a car receivable of, 30, of 83 million. And our total liability is only 68 million. So that means you investors are investing in a company that have very low level of debt. And uh, if we want by the early uh, year 14, we can clear out all the debt that we have. Yes, and uh, let's move on to our um, planned production. Here's uh, our some statistics. As you can see, our, we have a regular production of 6 million pair and uh, the overtime of 1.2 million pair in our to plan in Asian Pacific and Latin America. Comparing to another company, we have the plan in Latin America because we are our strategy is a, a low cost production and we have a clear our plan in North America and a move to Latin America. In year, our year 12 production in Asian Pacific in year, sorry, in year 13 production, our capacity utilization is 110 uh, 0.9 percent in the Asian Pacific and 114.9 percent in Latin America. Uh, we has decreased our plant production comparing to year 12. In year, because we have some inventory left from year 12, so we don't do any plant coverage in year 13. In year 13, we are producing six star shoes in, and uh, we in comparing to year 12, we were five star, and in year 13, we were six star and um, we increase our average uh, SQ rating and uh, we also achieve our economic upscale. Yes, and uh, as you can see, this table here is our cost and uh, rejected rate. Our cost of production was uh, decreased a lot in year 12, but has slightly in increased in year 13. Because in year 12, we were making 5 star shoe, and in year 13, we make 6 star shoe. That's why we have a little bit increase in our production cost. But our cost of projected pair was decreased over the year, which is a good sign for the company production. And if you hear uh, the below table is our company rejected rate 
of Azazia. As you can see, he has a branded production in the weak intellect and the whole self. That was the increase of Azazia. And he has a private label uh, rejection rate. It's also decreased from 5.3 to 4.2 to and uh, to 2.8 in year 30. And our shipment and inventory level, we have two plans, one in uh, Asian Pacific and one in um, Latin America. And Asian Pacific plans supply for Asian Pacific region for Latin America and uh, some ship to Europe, Africa. And uh, Latin America plans supply for Latin America itself and uh, for the Latin America market. And uh, our, here's our ending inventory level. As you can see in year 12, we have massive stock, a lot of excessive stock with 1.9 million in total. But in uh, year 13, we have done 25% clearance. We're lowering our price as well, and uh, we reduce that on to about more than 400,000 pair. And uh, why 400,000? That's, that's a big question. Because with that amount of stock, we have 21 days delivery. That's exactly equal to three week delivery that we have. We have two plans, and uh, when we deliver, that's three weeks. And uh, that amount of level keep um, the stock in the sufficient level. And uh, as, as mentioned before, we do the stock clearance in 25%, and uh, we have reduced our inventory level. And uh, next, my um, colleague, Elasi, will present about the marketing. <coughs> Thank you for introducing. I'm Tina. I'm marketing management. Uh, now I will introduce uh, in present about the marketing part. Uh, now our company have over around 20, 200 models available with five to six star SQ rating. And in since 2013, we not apply the celebrity endorsement because we try to we did under already undercut the price with the other competitor. And uh, we have two strong sale reasons. It's North America and Europe, Africa. We, in North America, we sell 2,075,000 75, pairs of And Europe, Africa, we sell 2,633,000 pairs of It's quite double for the other, to the other reason. And we have high uh, marketing is uh, have the high efficient in inventory liquid liquidation like Kevin already present he, in 2013 we just did 21 day to inventory turnover next part I will present about marketing cost compare first compare with the selling price per pair in the on this the my the right side the left side is year 12 and year 13 in the blue colors is internet uh, the marketing expense on internet and the orange is wholesale and on the selling price in year 12 we sell 68 dollar per pair of shoe compared with the marketing expense is like four times of the selling price and for selling price in wholesale forty two ninety nine compared with the uh, marketing expense is like five ton. And in year thirteen uh, we reduce the marketing expense to from sixteen uh, point eight dollar per pair of suit to eleven point eighty three per pair of suit and wholesale from six point nine and to five point four and also the selling price going down a bit from 68 to 65 and 42 to 41, just a little bit. And especially in this mm, chart, uh, the blue color is marketing expense, the orange one is net sale revenue, and the green one is cost as percent compared between the marketing and sale revenue. revenue. As you can see, like in year ten, it's uh we we spend a lot of money for marketing. It's up to fourteen point four percent, and we reduce we reduce to eight nine percent in year eleven, and keep going up 
on their trail and their thirty week going down. What I want to say in future that spending much money on marketing not warranty to have more revenue, but it's general effect a lot for net revenue. And and also like the price already have big competitor with the other competitor, so that's why we got the high net revenue even when we spend less for marketing expense. So next data is the human resource group presented by Thank you, Tina, for passing it over me. So I'm going to take over for the human resources. I'm the human resources manager. Uh, my name is Dita. So for the year 30 in, um, in our company, so the number of workers employed um, has decreased for, from year 12 to year 13. It's decreased by 1% in the Asian Pacific and also 3% in the Latin America, so in total of 4% down. But the worker productivity in the year 13 has increased from year 12 to, uh, to year 13. So this is the full explanation. So if you can, can see in the Asia Pacific, the, this one, the gray one, is the year 13, um, the thir year 13 worker productivity. And the orange one is the year 12. Year 11 is the year 11. Uh, the, the blue one is the year 11. So if you can see it, the number is, is going up from the year 12. It's not that significantly increased, but it's increasing even though it, we decrease the number of the workers that is employed in here. Why? Because we increase the incentives in, the, in both of the region. So in Latin America, we increase it by one point, we increase it uh, by 0 0.2 from 1.4 to 1.6, and also in Asia Pacific, it stays the same. So that's why if you look back, in the Asia Pacific, it's only increased by one, but if in Latin America, it's increased by 10. So it's pretty much um, a good sign, even though we decreasing the number of workers employed. And the capacity utilization in Asia Pacific is 110 as what Kevin have uh, presented before and also in Latin America. So uh, we try to utilize our productivity even though we decrease the numbers of workers employed because we want to make an efficient and effective um, productivity. By doing the training um, to the employee, we believe that they will give us also um, a good, good uh, result letter by um, doing a good job in the productivity and also the incentives and compensation. We want to give um, a good, a good, uh, a good present for the the employee for their good work for us. So by that we would like to emphasize them to get the productivity increase. Um, so if the best practices. Um, for the training that we have give to the employee. So in the Asia Pacific, uh, it is um, 552. It's all also increased from the, uh, from the year uh, 12. So Asia Pacific in the year 12 is 535 per worker. It's also increased uh, in the year 13. And also in the Latin America, it's also increased from 500 to 549. So it's a good it's a good um, strategy to really increase the productivity of the worker by giving them the training, the incentives, and the compensation. And I'm going to give it back to Kevin for the next strategy for the next year. Yes, <coughs> by, um, here's our strategy for the next coming year. We have a different strategy for our different department in the business. With our our corporate strategy, we are continue to be the low cost producer with the high volume. With the, we achieve the economic upscale, and we continue to focus on the wholesale market. That's where we focus on and uh, supply more in the private label market. 
in uh, marketing and competitive strategy, we maintain the effective and efficient marketing plan, uh, maintain the competitive price in the different region. In the operational strategy, we have to achieve the market accurating at the low cost using the high capacity of our different plan, keeping keep reducing the rejected rate over the years, uh, keep inventory at the low level, and uh, we will consider any plan upgrade if required to. And uh, we have to increase the worker productivity. Uh, and in the finance, we might reduce the, our long-term liability and uh, keep paying dividend, make the shareholder happy, and uh, we'll, we'll some buy back some shares in year 40. Thank you for your attention and the listening. Hold if on. you have uh, any questions. Yeah. Hold on. Okay.